Welcome to the On Deck Podcast for all your baseball DFS needs with your superstar host, fantasy baseball experts, Casey Bubba and Bogman. On Deck Podcast is sponsored by Line Star App, the number one top rated data and analytics tool for daily fantasy sports. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the On Deck MLB DFS podcast brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star MLB and download the app in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. You will not regret it. Everything you need for all the sports to build all the winning lineups. So check that out. Make it happen. You can find myself on Twitter at BDN Trick and my co-host, as always, on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman, how are we doing tonight? Great. Next question. I hate this. I hate it when my team plays this bad. I don't know. I, I said I was going to stop complaining about the Diamondbacks. They're bad. You're, so. you're, you're, you're playing the best team in baseball. It happens. It's okay. Oh, can't, man. Can't I them just, all. you know, uh, I, I'm, I hope you guys don't play the Dodgers in the first round of the playoffs if you make it so I can root against you. Hey, you, know, you I'll root f- for you if you're playing the Dodgers, but anybody else, I'm rooting against you. Yeah. So. Well, works for me. I'll take that because it means we got to the playoffs, so that works for me. <laughs> um, on the on the bright side, the uh, the A's late night hammer is going as planned. That's beautiful. Yes. Overall, it was a really weird night because there wasn't a ton of offense. Like The Reds exploded late against like Aristis Aquino's back and went deep in the ninth. So uh, <laughs> magic happens. You know, I found out about that Bogman, the line star uh, on Twitter at line star MLB gave me that update, but um, it's just the pitching was weird. Glass now left in the fourth with an arm injury. Lynn was okay, but not, there's really no pitcher, not a ton of pitchers. It's been any, a bad couple of days w- yeah. with the pitching, you know, Bieber went on the IL uh, DeGrom left his start. He's going to be fine. He should start Wednesday. Well, but- Scherzer, Scherzer threw his bullpen and stopped midway through his bullpen, talked for like 20 minutes with the trainers and then went to the locker room. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it's it's messy. It, it's it's messy right now. So uh, hopefully these guys, you know, uh, it, I'm almost afraid to recommend any starting pitcher because they keep leaving in the fourth. So uh, it just makes it, it makes it that, that much crazier that if you can, it's almost get the better floor player that hopefully has some upside and just get those 15 to 20 points and walk away right about right. now instead, instead of shooting the moon until we get things figured out. It's pretty crazy out there, but. Offense for days, and we'll have offense for days once again on Tuesday as we have 15 games, all 30 teams playing for us, Bogman, and I don't see any rain in sight. It's going <laughs> to be beautiful. We have some windy situations, so keep track of that, see where it lands, but no rain, no rain, which is a beautiful thing. So let's get Fingers cracking. Crossed. 15 games, get this in and out for you guys. Chicago Cubs at the New York Mets. Alec Mills coming off the IL versus Taiwan Walker. Over under eight and a half on this one. Mills is sixty five on DK six thousand on Fanduel. Walker eighty eight and eight thousand. Walker's been pretty good. It's like it's like hot and cold. It's like one good, one bad, one good. But when he's good, he's really good. Bogman. So I'm I'm kind of partly interested in Walker tonight. I think he's in play. I think yeah. you're right about that. He got into some walk issues. I think he walked five uh, last time against Chicago. Uh, so you got to look for that. But uh, uh, there there's not a ton of great pitching on the slate tonight. There's some good ones. Uh, that I like, but there's not a ton of great ones. So he's got to be in play in this slate. Yeah. Without the, a lot of great pitching, are you looking at uh, bats in this game or just, you know, 15 games, we can just cross certain games off if we need to. No, I think there's bats to be had here. They're expensive, right? Rizzo, Alonzo, Peterson has a great track record uh, against Walker, seven for 17 with a home two doubles. That's a four ball average. Uh, VR is in there. He's just not cheap. Though. The bats in this game are expensive, so they're just okay options. They are expensive. We saw, you know, Rizzo go deep on Monday. Dom Smith went deep on Monday. So there's some options here. I'm not sure I'm in a full stack mode. I don't mind going against Mills, but it's Mills than a bullpen game most likely. So you don't know what you're going to get there. I like Walker as a secondary option on DK, probably not so much on FanDuel, but you can uh, mix in some bats if you so choose. Um, but they are a little pricier, as you mentioned. Like if you want to go cheap, Billy McKinney, you can go there. VR is not super, super expensive, but the big dogs are pricey. Uh, so use that uh, wisely. Pittsburgh at the Washington Nationals. This was a uh, well, first game because the Washington Cubs last night. But uh, we have the wonderful Tyler. Uh, uh, where, did, where the heck did it go? Oh. Anderson. It's Anderson. Oh, there it is. I was looking on my sheet. Uh, the the, the <laughs> odds. Tyler Anderson versus uh, our buddies pitching Bogman. Oh, Patrick yeah. Corbin. You want to know what my eight. note? My note yes. next to Patrick Corbin's uh, name says it says no thanks. You That's know. It. 
I'm like Anderson. I could see because Washington's offense has been really, really bad outside. Like sure, we're going deep like crazy. Yeah, um, I'm not in love with Anderson, but I could see it on DK as an SP two. Um, otherwise, I think I'd rather pay up for Walker. Than yeah, Anderson. I'm so, with you there. Uh, it, it, he's only like a thousand more. I think he's 88 and Anderson 79. So uh, I think I'd rather go with Walker. Only one quality start in his last five for Anderson. So like you said, the Washington hasn't been hitting, so I get it. But I'm not going with either pitcher. I'm going with bats here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Polanco's cheap and he's four for eight against uh, Corbin in his career with a homer and a double. So 2,500 on both. Uh, Eric Gonzalez is cheap and he's been hitting a little bit 23 and 21. Uh, Brian Reynolds is 32 and 28. Adam Frazier's 39 and 29. One of those guys is going to be the Pirates All Star, right? Uh, Schwarber yeah. is 4,029. Harrison's cheap. Robles is cheap. So I- I'm I'm picking up some cheap options here. Yeah, the one of my favorite plays in this game will be Brian Hayes, 46 on DK, 34 on Fandle, crushing everything, and he gets Patrick Corbin. So, yeah, sign me up for that. Pittsburgh will sucker me into some value here. Brian Hayes being the top one I like, but you mentioned Frazier, Reynolds. Uh, there is definitely some nice plays. If, you know, you can roll the dice with Evans or Stallings if you want. Pittsburgh is quite intriguing. Washington, they're expensive and have been massively let down of late. New York Yankees at the Toronto Blue Jays on this one. We have the wonderful... Hung, uh, Hungjin Ryu taking on Montgomery. Montgomery 76 on DK, 75 on FanDuel. Ryu 9,000 on DK, 85 on FanDuel. The Jays got quieted on Monday night. Kind of expected. You can't do that every night. But they get a lefty in Montgomery who's been dominant but also has shown signs of getting hit from time to time. So where do you stand on this one? Uh, my notes on both pitchers, not against Toronto for Montgomery and not against the Yankees for Ryu. So Fair enough. Uh, I don't want to mess with with the pitchers here, which is why, once again, these are some of the better pitchers on the slate, too. So uh, I kind of don't want to take them. So I understand I'm not going to like rail against them or anything, but I'm just not going to be using them that much. A lot of PVB data here. Uh, Vlad is three for five with a bomb. Uh, against Montgomery, two for six for Bichette with a double and a bomb, two for seven for Sanchez with both of those hits being uh, bombs off of Ryu, three for 10 for Urshela with all three of those being doubles, three for 10 for Judge, three for 10 for Frazier with a double. And then there's a lot of bats that have been hitting. Like you said, they were quieted today, but Simeon, Teoscar, Biggio since coming back up uh, are off the IL. Telez, Panic, these guys have all been hitting along with LeMay, he's finally starting to pick it up. And you are. Uh, Stanton is is on fire recently. So uh, I'm going to take bats in this one. Yeah, definitely a bat spot. You could pretty much play the Jays every night, and it'll probably work out for you at least four days a week. So you can go that route. Vladita went deep again on uh, on Monday. Uh, the, the right-handed power bats of the Jays are, are live against Montgomery. And then definitely look at uh, look at the, the Yankees if you want. It is Buffalo. The ball can fly out of that ballpark. So Zero problems here. I think they'll both be pretty popular in this one, stack-wise, even though the pitchers are good. I think people see those two teams and think, let's get some offense. And honestly, don't blame them. Baltimore Orioles at the Cleveland Indians, over-under of nine between Matt Harvey and Cal Quantrill. Um, yeah, I'm going to stack, and I'm going to stack Cleveland early and often. I'm probably Baltimore because Quantrill's not great either, but I want Cleveland. Yeah, it's bats in this one, like you said. A seven for 18 for Hernandez against Harvey with a double, uh, one, uh, one for three with a triple. Um, I don't know why I put that on there for hedges. Uh, then yeah, Baltimore bats, like you mentioned. Mullins, 34 on both. Uh, Galvis has been hitting for a high average, 33 and 24. Maybe he drives some in. Uh, Ramirez has been hot, but he's 6,000 and 4,100. Bobby Bradley, if he's in there. 4034 Rosario is cheap at 38 and 28 so it's definitely bats and no pitching in this one. Yeah, no pitching at all. Cesar Hernandez surprisingly has like been worth the 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 price and 2900 on FanDuel is extremely cheap for his production right now so definitely get him in there but you mix in the the likely suspects of J-Ram uh, and company Bobby Bradley I don't mind either as you mentioned but Keep playing Cedric Mullins. Even like in his last at bat, he walked and stole two bags. Like, dude just puts up fantasy points. Like, it's going out of style. He's 3,400 on DK, which is really cheap. 34 on Fandle is not bad, but 34 on DK is really cheap for his production. DJ Stewart's cheap. He hit cleanup today. It's leadoff on Sunday. Um, he's been playing well. Like, the, the reason I keep falling into the Orioles, they're so damn cheap in yeah. like a really, really good spot again. So I don't mind them, but you want you want to keep attacking Harvey. That's that's plain and simple. So yeah. two usually bad offenses facing off against two worst pitchers. Going to be a fun one. Over under a nine. Um, Boston at the Atlanta Braves in this one. The uh, the corpse of Eduardo Rodriguez 
against Tucker Davidson. Over under of nine. What has happened to Erod? He's 78 on DK, 64 on Fandle. Davidson's been good, 74 and 76. Do you trust him against Boston at home? I think Davidson is a nice contrarian start. Yep. You know, you're making agree. a weird lineup. Yeah, I, I'd throw Low him. No DH. In yep. Big. Yeah, it is. Erod. I'm not interested in, I, you know, like you said, the corpse, uh, you know, has been bad. Uh, 15 earned runs in his last three starts. I'm just going to let him get right before I yeah. use him again. So uh, I'm with you. I'm bats in this game and probably more on the Atlanta side. Um, Freddie Freeman, 5,000, 4,000. Riley's 45, 3,000. Contreras, Albies. I'm going to go with some Atlanta bats here. Yeah, I'll get the value. Like you can always play Acuna. That's that's pretty easy. But Riley Contreras, Ozzy Albies hits lefties very very well. So you can get some nice um, Atlanta value there and uh, stack it up against Erod. Erod's broken like really bad. I'm with you. Like I've almost dropped him in a couple like twelve team leagues. It's 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 really tough right now. And I'm a big Erod fan. I'm pulling for him, but it's just not good. So stack up the Braves. Stack them up early and often. Cincinnati Reds at the Milwaukee Brewers. Cincinnati put a pounding on the Brew Crew on Monday night. Now they send Luis Castillo to the mound against Brett Anderson over under eight and a half. Um, Castillo, 8,000 on DK, 73 on Fandel, Anderson, 69 and 57. Castillo's been decent the He's last He's got to be starts. in play. Yep. He's got to be in play, Bob. You know, uh, his last start was against Milwaukee, and he was one out away from a quality start. So he's starting to come around. Um, there's some uh, PVB data against him in the form of Avisel Garcia, uh, Garcia, five for 15 with a bomb. But uh, nobody else really hits him on the Brewers real well, at least in his starts against them. So, uh, you know, I like him and I like some Reds bats. I'm no interest in Brett Anderson and no one else should. Uh, Winker, Stevenson, Castellanos, Votto went yard uh, on uh, on Monday. Suarez, 47 and 31. A farmer's been hitting if he's in the lineup like these guys have been hitting. So it's Castillo and Reds bats for me here. Yeah, uh, when you put a lefty on the bump, talked about it yesterday, give me uh, Castellanos all day long. 100% Castellanos against him. You know, Suarez as well. He had a decent night. Winker's always in play because I don't think Anderson's long for the game, so they get the bullpen action in there. So definite value there. Uh, I mentioned Aristides uh, Aquino got called up, went deep. He's 25 on, fan, uh, on DK, 2200 on Fandle if you want to go there for some weird value. The Reds are one of my favorite, more favorite plays on this slate. There's going to be a lot of good ones because pitching's garbage, pretty much as you said. But the Reds, I'm keep attacking Anderson like this. If this game was in Great American Small Park. The total would be like ten and a half. So yeah. we're getting a discounted total here, and it's mainly because not saying the Brewers can't do it. Like if you want to go Vogelbach, who went deep on Monday and kind of go against Castillo, that's fine. I want the Reds. I want the Reds and Castillo as an SP two. I don't hate because, like you said, the uh, pitching's bad, and you just got to pull some triggers and cross your fingers. But uh, this right. next game. I actually like both the pitchers in this game. The yes. Detroit Tigers at the Kansas City Royals. Casey Mize, Mike Miner. I don't know how the over-under is nine in this game, to be totally honest. No way. Mize is 71 on DK, 82 on Fandle, 100% in play for me. Miners is 92 and 88. Love him as well. I like both these pitchers. <laughs> I think it's a low-scoring game. I could be totally blind, but I love the value on Mize. And Miner, on a slate this bad, I'll even pay 9,200 on DK for him. Yeah, look, two out of his last three for Miner have been quality. And last time versus Detroit, he went six. He gave up four, which is not quality, but he struck out eight and didn't walk anybody. So I think they're both in play. Uh, two quality starts in a row for Mize. And his last time out against uh, Kansas City, he had five innings pitched, only two earned, only four strikeouts and two walks. But uh, it's still a decent line, and he's been pitching better as of recent. And... No one's really hot on either one of these teams. I mean, Scope's been hitting a little bit. Uh, Akil Badu has been hitting a little bit, but uh, there's some good PVB data for Perez, five for nine with a double, four for nine for Grossman, three for 10 for Mickey. But uh, I like I like both the pitchers here, and it's going to make me probably stay away from the bat. So I'm 100% with you, Bob. Yeah, I want both pitchers of this one. The only guy, like a one-off value would be Robbie Grossman. He, like talked about him a lot lately. But uh, he went deep again on Monday. He's just been a sneaky, sneaky good value most nights. So if you need that, that's fine. But I prefer both pitchers in a landslide. So 15 games, I'll pass on the bats. Give me some some pitchers in this one. Tampa Bay at the Chicago White Sox. Shane McClanahan versus Dallas Keuchel over under eight and a half. Uh, McClanahan's 82 and 63. Keuchel 73 and 71. McClanahan, it's always the innings thing with him. And we saw it last time, got hit yeah. around. Then you got Keuchel, who was outstanding his last time. Um, I just usually can't use Keuchel. The Razor uh, swinging sweet sticks, though, so I probably won't use them again. Yeah, here's my thing with Keiko. Two quality starts in a row, like you said. Uh, you know, we 
bash him a little bit here, uh, but I'm going to let somebody else do it. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I trust Keiko over McClanahan. I'd say He's, that. I'm with you there, 100% with you there. But I don't have to pick either one, so I'm not going to. So yeah. <laughs> give me some bats here. Uh, Zanino, seven for 27 with two homers and a double. I mean, that's only a 259 average, but that's a lot of experience against Keiko. And then guys like a Rosa Reina, you know, Lau went yard against a low. Um, or against Lynn, um, Kiermaier, 23, cheaper on DK than he is on FanDuel. Wendell, Tim Anderson, Garcia, Abreu, Mercedes. Give me some bats here. Yeah, the White Sox are quite expensive, which is kind of a shame, but uh, you can get some value raised if you want. Like a Rosarena is expensive. He went deep, but the Margots, the uh, Yandy Diaz is a lot of those uh, Brosu who's been bad, but you know, you never know. Maybe he wakes up. So you can get some value with Tampa Bay versus Keiko if you want. Part of me just wants to cross this game off unless you want to pay up for the White Sox because I like McClanahan, but we saw what happens to the youngster. If he's off, it's not going to be pretty, so keep that in mind. Texas at the Houston Astros. we got Kyle Gibson and Lance McCullers coming back after his rehab start. Over under 8.5 on this one. you got Gibson 75 and 78, McCullers 87 and 75, respectively. Um, with a slate so bad on pitching, Bogman, does Gibson intrigue you as an SP2? I think he kind of has to. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I stared at it for a while earlier going, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and here's my note that a 10 out of 11 are quality starts, right? Yep. His caper nine is a gigantic 7.28, 2.64 on the walks per nine. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. This Houston is hitting, and mm -hmm. I don't want McCullers either. It's going to be his first start since May twenty yeah. second, and he only went sixty four pitches in his rehab assignment. So uh, his last rehab start. So I don't. I don't want McCullers at that price. I'd rather take Walker for the same. You know, a hundred bucks more. Uh, and I know he he can go deep if he lasts. And there's some good PVB data against Gibson too. Bregman six for eighteen with two doubles and a homer. 11 for 35 for Brantley, who you mentioned yesterday has been swinging it hot, a double and a homer. Uh, Altuve is 8 for 29 with a double. Um, there's a lot of experience against him, and McCullers has some decent PVB data against him. Two Solak, 3 for 9, 4 for 14 for IKF. And then Alvarez, Tucker, Guriel, Cor Correa, Straw have all been hitting. Gallo's starting to pick it up. Lowe's starting to pick it up. What's the over on this game? Did we have one? Eight, eight and a half. See, I think that might be low. I, I just see this being a bash fest. I'm not going to mess with it. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to go. You talk me out of it. You didn't say anything, but you talk me out of uh, going with with Gibson. I'm not doing it. Not against the Astros. Bash. It's one of those like if the Astros are going to like determine chalky. Like we're an hour before lock. We see like some updated, you know, ownership coming out, and the Astros are chalky. I don't want it. If we see that they're like middle of the pack or lower owned. I'm going to put some Astros out there because, A, there's some value ones. You mentioned Tucker. Straw has been playing extremely well. Um, you got McCormick, who's been sneaking in there from time to time. There's values to be had yeah, yeah. With, with Houston, which intrigues me. I don't think I can go against uh, with the, the Texas bats because two things. McCullers will be good enough for why he's out there. And secondly, bullpen is so hard to determine your stacks. There's other there's so many other games that I can focus on and not have to worry about it. So if I want any action, it'll be Houston for sure. I could see the argument for Gibson, but I think we have so many in like that middle range. You don't have to. Yeah. It's like yeah. we're looking for those aces. Like right now, so far, there'll be some. It's like so far, Miner's the only 9K plus guy in DK we've liked. So yeah. we have a ton of guys in the sevens and eight. So that, that's and honestly, there's just not I'll even take a, KC Mize. I'll take Casey Mize at 71. Yeah, there's not even a ton in play. Like so far, yeah. it's for me, it's Walker. Uh, I don't want Re or Montgomery, but I get it. Uh, Davidson, maybe Castillo, maybe Mize mm -hmm. and Miner, right? That's it. It's rough. So, it's rough. Yeah, it's not the greatest slate for pitching. Here's a good one. Yeah, this is what women look, think when they see us when they walk into the bar. It's rough. But yeah, uh, slim pickings here. Slim and, pickings, uh, girls. Get it. Slim. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just pickings. Um, <laughs> Miami at the St. Louis Cardinals in this one. We've got Trevor Rogers, Kwang Hung Kim over under seven and a half. Trevor Rogers has been outstanding. He's 10,000 on both sides. Kim is 72 on DK, not on family. He's coming off the IL, so he probably won't be long for the game. One thing I'll mention before I give you the floor, Rodgers has been great. St. Louis over the last few weeks striking out over 30% of the time versus lefties, but they also have some of those best power versus lefties. So it's a catch-22, depending on how you look at it. But on this slate, we got to go Rodgers, right? You have to. Uh, I, I'm with you. you got to take him. And it's not the best spot to, to end up in here, but uh, five of his last six are quality 
Uh, first start of the year was against St. Louis. He only went four, but it was once again, his first start of the year, uh, two earned six strikeouts, four walks in that one. Uh, he's just been lights out recently. So I I'm sticking with him here and that makes me out on St. Louis bats, but maybe in on some against Kim, you know, his first start off the IL here, uh, Marte Duvall Chisholm Bertie have all been hitting a little bit. Aguilar is in there as well. So, uh, I'll take some bats, but Rogers is probably my favorite pitcher of the day. Starley Marte's price has gone down since we talked yesterday. He's down to 42. I guess it's just dumb. Uh, the guy was literally the player yeah. of the week, player of the week last week. And it's just, he keeps getting it done. So play your Rogers on the mound, but yeah, Marte Duvall Chisholm Aguilar, you get a very affordable Marlin stack here, but even if you just want to one off, keep playing Starley Marte, at least in cash people, like just play him. Uh, yeah. Your two outfielders, Marte and Castellanos, you should have locked into cash already. That's two. I'll give you right out the gate um, for this slate. San Diego at Colorado. It was a Coors Field dud because Austin Gomber did Austin Gomber things. Didn't strike anybody out, but he went eight shutout innings. We get Padres Rockies tonight. Darvish, Chichi Gonzalez over under 10 and a half in this one. So um, Chichi pretty, Gonzalez throw every day. Like I feel I, like he is their starter every day and I never want him ever. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like the greatest things in sliced bread. So I think oh. we want Padres bats, but are you using Darvish and Coors? I'm not his he's been great so far this year, but his short start of the year was in Colorado Four innings pitch. He didn't give up a run, but he only struck out two and walked one. So just something he comes out. It seems like he might be flat in Colorado. So uh, it's too expensive to buy in this slate, even though he's cheaper than he usually is. But no, I'd rather go with Rogers against St. Louis. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'm just not going to risk it. So for me, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be bats on either side here. Uh, you know, obviously take any San Diego bat you want because it's Chi Chi. But uh, Blackman four for twelve against Darvish with a double and a homer. Four for fifteen for Story with a double and a homer. Uh, two for eight for Crone with a bomb. So uh, there's some bats to be had on the Colorado side as well. Yeah, you can definitely go Colorado. They've been so disappointing. Doesn't have their home on the road right now. Uh, eventually, they got to wake up. You'll never get them lower owned. Then tonight versus Darvish, yeah. you're not going to get them. So if we've seen weirder things happen, Padres to be extremely popular and for very good reasons. Like Chichi Gonzalez is, yes, that bad. So pay for your Padres. It's justified. We don't have a lot of expensive pitchers to pay for, so you can afford them. I make this happen. Like They're going to be very, very good. You get your usual suspects or if you want to find some value, but look at like, um, you know, Hosmer. Some of those, like Hosmer gets forgotten more often than not. Some of those guys like Cronenworth, everyone flocks to Machado and Tatis. They're the most expensive. Maybe look at some of the other guys also to uh, differentiate and maybe save a few shuckles. Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Oakland Athletics, my good buddy, Andrew Heaney versus Frankie Montas, over under eight and a half. Heaney's been outstanding his last two starts. He's 81 on DK, 92 on FanDuel. Montas is 85 and 83. Who would I you might... rather have? Oh, this is so miserable. I, I think I want Montas just because I love the way the A's are swinging the bats right now. They're on fire. And that's fair. Like uh, Heaney, Heaney's been good too, so he yep. he needs to be in play. I yep. think Montas, though, like I can't figure him out because here's my note on him: last nine starts, the most earned run he's given up is four in a game, which is nice. But only four quality starts in those nine starts. But his last one was his longest at six point one innings pitched. So it looks like he's getting better. So I think I'm with you. I think I'd rather have Montas, but it's slight. And I kind of don't want to mess with either one of them. I think I'm with you, and I'm going to go bats in this game. It's guys like Olsen, 4 for 12 against Heaney with a double, uh, 4 for 8 for Rendon against Montas, Otani, Upton, Chapman, uh, you know, any of those guys. I think I'm going to stick with bats here. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm sticking with the bats. Um, you know, Kana, Kemp, just like uh, yeah. you mentioned Olsen. Chapman is on fire right now. Like, he has woken up from the dead. Uh, Murphy went deep on Monday. There's a lot to like, and they're affordable pieces. Like um, you got you got Olson is the expensive piece at 6K, which is insane for Oco Coliseum. But the other guys are very affordable, so you can have some fun there. I don't mind if you want to take some Angels, but I'm going to stick on the A side of things and keep riding these hot, hot bats. It's going to be warming up a ton this week in California. So when everyone focuses on like good hitter ballparks, California is going to be very hot this week, and so the ball's going to be a lot more active than usual. So keep that in mind. So give me the A's in this one. Two more games for you. Arizona Diamondbacks at the San Francisco Giants. Uh, we don't have a total on this one yet, but we have uh, Corbin Martin got called up for the D-backs. He's 58 on DK. 
Sammy Long's pitching for the Giants. He's 62 on DK. Neither are on Fandle yet. I don't see either lasting long enough to make a big impact in this game, Buckman. Yeah, uh, pass on any pitching. So go with Giants hitters. Yes, uh, that's what I well would said. say. Um, well said. You know, okay. Stack them up. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm stacking them, but yeah, I mean, Crawford Crawford's has been still too quite cheap. hot. Still yeah. too cheap. 41 and 29, like you said. Posey is out there. Uh, Lamont Wade, 4,000, 2,100. Like, get, get yourself just at least one share of a giant bat because the Diamondbacks are miserable on the road right now. Belt's had a couple big hits tonight, so maybe he's finally getting healthy. Get him while he's cheap. Like uh, just even like a Crawford belt, one two punch. Posey had the day off, so he'll be playing on Tuesday. So yeah, you can maybe you don't go full stack, but I'd have some activity in that one because that D backs bullpen's not good and Martin won't last very long. So think about that one, folks. Philadelphia at the Los Angeles Dodgers, Eflin versus Urias. Eflin's 84 on DK 81 on Fandle. Urias 96 and 96. If you want to go F1, you can. It's, it's difficult, though, Boggs. Six of his last seven are quality starts. Uh, high strikeouts and low walks, too, but the Dodgers is a tough start. Would you rather go with Eflin or Montas? Probably, probably Eflin, actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Eflin, too. So I think that's kind of yeah. where I am. Like, he's a decent option. You don't have to throw him out there because it's the Dodgers. And Urias, look, uh, I like him. He, he's in play today. Uh, Philly's been hitting decently, though. So um, not not the not a lock or anything. But uh, I kind of I kind of like both of them, which makes me kind of off on bats overall in this game. What is the over? Did, did we have one for this or no? Oh, we did not have one yet. And the one thing I'll say that makes Eflin a little sweeter is Bellinger's out Monday. There's a good chance he's out Tuesday, and it's the aisle on Wednesday. That's kind of where things are looking right now. So right. Uh, that would help aid the problem as well. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. So I think they're both in play. Yeah, they're both in play. Go, are you going with any bats? I'm kind of not interested. I'm, I'm kind of just – I'm off on the bats on this one. Um, unless yeah. you're stacking the Phillies, I really don't want much. I always say you can play the Dodgers anytime. So if you want to do it, you can. But I like Eflin enough not to do it. Like I don't think they go off-off to make an impact type thing. Minnesota. At the Seattle Mariners, we have J.A. Happ, Chris Flexen, over under eight and a half. We do have an over under now on that Phillies game. Phillies Dodgers is nine. But nine. Um, see, okay, maybe twins. we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're wrong. We'll see. But over under eight and a half, Happ or Flexen? You want either of these cheapies? No, I mean uh, I don't want anything to do with Flexen. Happ just he just doesn't get enough. Not a high enough strikeout upside for me to want him at all. So uh, three qualities in, in his eleven starts so far: six point two three per nine, a uh, two point seven two walk per nine isn't bad, but no thanks. G yeah. Give me bats. Give me give me Cruz. Uh, give me Donaldson. Uh, you know Fraley's been hitting. Uh, JP Crawford is cheap and he's been hitting. Larnick's been hitting a little bit. Thirty one and twenty one. So I'm I'm all bats in this game. Yeah, I like the Twins. They're one of my late night hammers. I, I could jump on Kirilov on deep on Monday. Looks like he's getting healthy and flexing. Just not good, folks. Not good at all. So <laughs> yeah, give me give me some Twins as a little late night hammer. I'm with you on that one. Uh, if you had to narrow it down, Bogman, who are your stacks tonight? Uh, I mean, th there's there's some decent ones. Uh, like uh, you know, we said before, I'm kind of off on bats in some of these games, but you can do a mini giant stack against. The Diamondbacks, I think. Um, you can stack Padres against Chi Chi Gonzalez. Uh, you could stack. Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to go to it. I think you can stack the Astros against Gibson, yep. even though he's been good. Uh, either side of uh, either side of Tampa Bay or Chicago could get stacked. Um, those are probably my favorite ones. Oh, uh, either side of Baltimore, Cleveland too. Yeah, Baltimore, Cleveland, um, Oakland as well. I liked, I pretty much liked everything you already said, but I want to throw Oakland in there. And then um, Cincinnati versus Milwaukee. Cincinnati versus Brett Anderson. Stack that one up. All right, Bogman, again, like we said earlier, everyone check out Lionstar on Twitter at Lionstar app and at Lionstar MLB. They'll tweet out all kinds of good stuff, including the home run calls of the day. If you retweet the home run calls from Bogman Sports, myself, and Ryan Humphreys, and one goes deep like Monday, Ryan Humphreys, he got one. He got one, folks. So um, if, if you get – he had B. Crawford, by the way. If you get the home run call of the day, you have a chance to win some free swag. So Bogman, on Tuesday, June 15th, who is your home run call of the day? I feel like I might steal yours, so I'm going to let you have it first. So you're going to give you yours first. Steal mine. Oh, wow. That's that's awfully flattering of you. Um, you probably aren't going to steal it, but okay. I appreciate the thoughts. I'm going to go with Cabrian Hayes off Patrick Corbin. 
Okay, I like that one. Uh, give me Nick Castellanos. Uh, yeah, that's g- a give one. me give me Casty against. I Anderson. almost took Casty, so you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's see? my boy. That's my boy. So <laughs> I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm gonna go to Brian Hayes. I think Corbin is absolute dust. So uh, yeah, we'll start that one off early. Hopefully, it's a first inning. It's the first game of the night. Let's just get it off with a bang. That'd be <laughs> outstanding. So I, I got uh, I got Hayes. You got Casty. I think that's like that's at least two. Humphreys will give a third winner. We're we're gonna get a lot of swag on Tuesday. I'm that's feeling right. swaggy. Let's go. Let's go. But everybody, give a rate and review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. Check out the Lion Star YouTube page to watch our beautiful faces talk baseball to you Monday through Friday. But uh, until next time, Bogman is on Twitter at Bogman Sports. I'm at BD Entry. We'll be back with you guys breaking down Wednesday's slate. But good luck on Tuesday. Yep. Good luck. Thank you for listening to the Lion Star app on deck podcast. Download Lion Star app from the App Store or go to linestarapp.com for all your DFS baseball needs. If you love the On Deck podcast, support KC Bubba and Bogman by rating and subscribing. Good luck.